morning and welcome to Deep Springs Baptist Church. We're glad that you're here. Thank you for being here with us and I pray that the, the Spirit will continue to move about and I know it was here during the Sunday school hour. I know the kids downstairs were writing notes back and forth like they were supposed to because it was part of their teacher's assignment. And then I went to the other class and they were learning the books of the Bible and I thought, well, I'll show some preacher knowledge on them. I asked them three questions they answered all three of them, so I quit asking questions. I figured I knew what they were talking about. So good job downstairs, teachers. Now come up here, and the spirit of laughter and unity was in here. And then we got blessed with a good Sunday school lesson. So it's been a good day to be in Sunday school. If you're not in Sunday school, please be here next Sunday at 10 o'clock. And by the way, next Sunday at 10 o'clock will be our reorganization Sunday. It will be the time for us to... Uh, to, uh, to move up and promote and to reassign Sunday school classes and teachers. Uh, don't forget our business meeting tonight. Uh, be back tonight. There's no hot topics coming up, so we need to, but we still need to have a few things to talk about. The car show is October the 2nd, and October the 3rd is Women's Day. And uh, I'll, I got my first no this time, and my first no, and it come from the women, not the men. So we're good. So it took me four women to get it, but uh, we got it and uh, got all three speakers lined up. If I didn't ask you, you got away with it this year. Just hang on. I'll get you next year. So don't forget Women's Day, October the 3rd, Car Show, October the 2nd. And most importantly, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget to continue serving the Lord in every avenue we go through. We're going down a new road today. We're going to get out of Acts for a little bit, but we're going to stay in Acts because we're a 21st century church. Excuse me, excuse me. We're a New Testament church. That's a better word to use. So we're going to stay in Acts, but we're going to jump over to Ephesians chapter 4 today, and we're going to travel down a new road, a road that I expect us to travel down and I expect us to stay on. So... With that said, it's a good day to be in the house of the Lord, and I pray that you worship Him freely. The altar is always open, and uh, let's just continue in and, uh, and grow and worship the Lord, the, the one true God together. And let's worship, church. Let's worship. to do when I was growing up is when the redeemed are gathering in. Gathering in, 
And we'll hear his invitation, come ye blessed to the Lord, when the redeemed are gathering in. When the redeemed are gathering in, washed like snow and free from all sin. How we will shout and how we will sing. When the redeemed are gathering in. Flip over to page 92. Just a little talk with Jesus. I once was lost in sin. But Jesus took me in And then a little light from heaven filled my soul It bathed my heart in love And wrote my name above And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole Have a little talk with Jesus Tell him all about our trouble Hear our faintest cry Answer by and by Feel a little prayer will turning Know a little fire is burning Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right Sometimes my past seems drear Without a ray of fear And then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day The mists of sin may rise and hide the starry skies But just a little talk with Jesus moves away Have a little talk with Jesus Tell him all about our trouble Hear our faintest cry Answer by and by Feel a little prayer will turn him No little fire is burning Find a little talk with Jesus Makes it right I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care, and just a little talk with Jesus makes me right. Have a little talk with Jesus, tell him all about our trouble. Answer by and by Feel a little prayer will turn him No little fire is burning Find a little talk with Jesus Makes it right a good looking bunch this morning everybody have a good week at school yeah well we're gonna I want you all to look for just a minute I want you to look for just a minute can anybody tell me what I've got here a tube of toothpaste okay I want you to watch what I'm gonna do with this tube of toothpaste first of course I'm gonna take the lid off Okay, I think I've almost got it all out. Let me make sure. Okay. I think I've got it all out now, don't I? Is it all out of the toothpaste? Yeah. Out of the, okay. Now, I need a helper this morning. Can I have a volunteer, somebody to help me this morning? Okay. Okay, Amy, I'm going to see... If you can get that toothpaste back into my, yes, in the tube. Can you do that for me this morning? How? You're going to try to. Okay, I want you to try to see if you can get my toothpaste back into that 
tube for me. Okay, go ahead and try it. Oh, is it in the tube? No? How about if I give you something? Let's try this. Let's try a spoon. Let's see if you can do it with a spoon. It's kind of big. It's too big. Okay, see if you can do it with a spoon. Can y'all see what he's doing? It's too big. Oh, that's a lot, isn't it? Okay, just pull it back down there. Okay, let's try one more thing. Let's see if you can use a small toothpick. See if you can get in there with a small thing. You see what he's doing here? That's too small. Can you get it back in there? Did you take it? Can we get it all in there? No, I don't think so either. I don't think so either. Well, this kind of reminds me of something that we need to be reminded of. Thank you. You can go sit down. Okay. If you can't put the toothpaste back into the tub when you squeeze it out, of course not. It's kind of silly to do that, isn't it? Did you know that the very same thing is true of the words that we speak? Have you ever said something that hurt someone? Have you ever said something that hurt somebody? I have, yes, it's hurt their feelings. And you might even, heard them, might even hear them say, take that back. You can't take it back, can you? Can you take back what you say? No. No, you can't. Once you've said it, it is said. You can't put the words back in your mouth any more than you can squeeze this tube of toothpaste back into the tube. This is why we need to be very careful about the things that we say. The Bible says, he, hold, he who holds his tongue is wise. All of you know the children's rhyme that says, have you ever heard somebody say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names never hurt me? Have you heard that saying before? It kind of sounds nice, but it isn't true. Words can hurt. The Bible says reckless words pierce like a sword. Our words can also cut like a knife. They can hurt others. We all know that God hears every word we say, and he knows every thought that we have in our mind. It's very important for us to be careful about the things that we can say. The Bible says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation in my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Once we've said it, we can't take it back. So let's make sure this week that our words are always pleasing to God. Let us pray. Lord, we want to come to you and just ask that you be with us this, this, be with us this week. If we're at school, home, work, or wherever it may be, we just want to ask that you please just be with us and let us say kind words to one another and words that are pleasing to you. Please forgive us for our many sins. We love you, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Change the leper spots 
just to sing this last verse real loud because whenever we're standing before Jesus Christ we're going to sing as loud as we can we're going to sing to the top of our voice because Jesus paid it all and when before the throne I stand in him complete Jesus died my sins to Because Jesus paid it all, we can turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Because Jesus couldn't, because we can't put the toothpaste back in the tooth, back in the tooth tube. We need to turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Because we can't do everything by ourselves, we need to turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Because we need the Lord, we need to turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Guess where we're going today? Ephesians chapter 4. But more importantly than that, we're going to rely on the Lord this morning, okay? We need Him. The, the title of my message is just simply one word. Unity. Unity. Is there anything better than a well-oiled machine? No. No. Now, I grew up poor, like many of you all, but my daddy, he had the bright idea to go to the junkyard, and he bought five or six of those little Ford Carrier pickup trucks. The guy, he got a heck of a deal. He couldn't afford not to buy them. So we brought them home, and the guy said, no, only one of them's running. But the one that was running only had like one fender, and it didn't have a windshield. It was, it was just all beat up. So dad bought the whole little flock. I think he paid $500. That tells you what kind of shape they were all in. Brought them in, set them out in the field, and we took and we patched it all together and we banded it all together and we made, them, made a mighty truck that we could all be proud of. And then we, because it had six, six or seven different colors of fenders and we, we spray painted it, we made it look like a decent little running truck. It, was, it ran good, and that was it. We were proud of it because we had, uh, we were proud of it because we'd made it. But, you know, you get in it, and you take off down the road, and it had a 260 air conditioner. There's two windows rolled down at 60 mile an hour because if you turn the air conditioner on, it slowed down to about 40 mile an hour. Y'all had those trucks. But it ran. It ran. I was proud to drive that little truck because it was, it was a running, well-oiled machine. Nobody wants to drive a piece of junk. Sometimes financial reasons make us drive a piece of junk. But if it is a piece of junk, we do want to make sure that it's running good. We want to make sure that it's a well-oiled machine. Well, I'm here to tell you today, Deep Springs is no junk. The family of God is no piece of junk. 
So we need to be running like a well-oiled machine. We need to be running like a well-oiled machine. Can I call a timeout? Helen, you were right. That camera's killing me back there in the back. During Sunday school, they got pointed out that I was going to be looking at that screen. I love it. I absolutely love it. I didn't know I was getting this this morning. Y'all bless me. Thank you for contributing to the broadcast ministry. Thank you, boys and men, for, for working so hard to get it back in. Now that I got it out of my system, maybe we can move forward now. Let, me, uh, let us go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse number 3. Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse number 3. Let's stand and honor reading God's Word. And just because I can, I'm going to read it off the back screen this morning. It says... Starting in verse number 3, it says, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, there is one body, one Spirit, even as we are one called for by His calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one, one God, our Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Let us pray. Most loving, gracious God, add to the reading of Your Word. Make it alive and well in us today. Hide me behind the cross that they may not see me, but they may see a risen Savior. Thank you for the blessings of this little church. Thank you for the gift of laughter. Thank you for the gift of unity. Now, Father, my message today is one of review. But, Father, it's one that we need to make sure, that we need to make sure before we continue to move forward, that we are right, one right with you and one right with each other. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all God's people said... Amen. Yeah, I did it. I managed. Good job. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Got a mighty simple outline today. You've got the scriptures right there in front of you. We got a mighty fine outline today. Let's get right into it. There is one body. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14 says, Even as the body is not made up of one part, but of many. But of many. Have you, I talked earlier about a well-oiled machine. You know, a well-oiled machine, it looks like it's one big machine. Have you ever took apart an engine? Don't. <laughs> Don't, unless you know what you're doing. Don't. One of y'all's got a truck you want to restore, but you're afraid to crack a hole in the engine because you don't know how to put it back together. Don't do that. Because there's all kinds of moving parts and things in there. and There's little pins and stuff. you got to get just right. If you leave one of them out, you're in trouble. And by the way, most instruction manuals can't help you get a machine back together, so you got to know what you're doing. But it is made up of many moving parts. Many moving parts. I like to drink coffee, and every morning I drink a couple of cups of coffee, and at lunch I drink a cup of coffee. On the way home I drink a cup of coffee, and if Stephanie had let me, I drink one before I go to bed. I like to drink coffee. I just like it. But what would it be like if I had my cup of coffee right here, and I tried to drink because I didn't have an elbow? I guess what I'd do, I'd throw it up in the air and try to walk underneath it and catch it. Or I'd have to get me a real long straw. How many of y'all like drink soda pops? How many of y'all like drink water? Okay, you don't take coffee out and insert Red Bull energy drinks. I don't matter what you drink. But if you didn't have an elbow, you couldn't you'd throw it up in the air and try to catch it or you, you couldn't get over there to it. So next time you take a drink, say, thank you, Lord, for my elbow. Thank you for my elbow and how it all works together. The body is made up of many parts. I want you to take a look around Deep Springs this morning. Does anybody look like you? And for that, I'm thankful. I, couldn't, I, can't, I forget your names half the time anyway, and I get them wrong, especially me and Lake and bless their hearts. Uh, but, uh, but we're all different. We're not one part. Can one person do it all? Can one piston run the whole engine? No. That piston is no good if it don't have a crankshaft or underneath it. That piston is no good if it don't have a little bitty O-ring on top to keep, the, to keep it tight along that cylinder wall. That piston is no good if it doesn't have a cylinder wall. That piston is no good if that cylinder wall is there, but it gets damaged and it's not doing its part. That piston's no good if you don't have a starter on the engine to crank the shaft, which cranks the piston, which causes fire, which sends fire to the spark plugs. Oh, and by the way, you can't start a car. Well, 
If you straight shift, you can, but not many straight shifts nowadays. You can't do this. You know, I used to have a truck, that Ford Courier, park it on a hill because the starter wasn't right, and I had to jump it off. But, but one thing I learned, I didn't need a starter to start my car, but I needed a battery to keep it running. So there's all kinds of moving parts to a vehicle. Church, there's all kinds of parts, deep springs. There's all kinds of parts to the church of Jesus Christ. We are one body, yes. The name is beautifully displayed on the front of our church. It's displayed on our beautiful sign. It's displayed this morning when we come in. It was on the screens. It's beautiful. We love the name Deep Springs Baptist Church, Missionary Baptist Church. We love it. But we're made up of many different parts. Many different parts. We need you. We need you. We need you. Yes, we need you. We need you and your moving part. You say, well, preacher, I'm just a little bitty O-ring. I did a sermon a Sunday night about six weeks ago on being two old two befores. Preacher, I'm just a little bitty O-ring on that piston. Well, if that O-ring was off that piston, that piston wouldn't fit tight in that cylinder wall and it would bounce back and forth and it would shut the whole system down because after a little, we might run for a few days, but when that old ring's not working, it's letting too much oil in there and it'll foul out cylinders, and you ain't going anywhere. My sermon a couple of weeks ago was in reference to the 202 befores being stuck in a wall. You take a 2 before out of that wall, it'll be fine, I promise. Structural engineer would have a heart attack, but it'll be okay. You take a 2 before out of that wall, it'll be fine. You take two or three 2 befores out of that wall, and you let a heavy snow come, what's going to happen? It'll eventually, it's going to fall and weaken. Now we all want to be the cornerstone, but not everybody's called to be the cornerstone. Jesus is the cornerstone. We need some O2 before just to hold the building up, and we need you to do your job wholeheartedly. There is one body. goes on, it says, there is one spirit. When I think of one spirit, I think of the word no confusion. There's no confusing. It's like having God with you the whole time. Because remember what Jesus said? I'm going to be reunited with my Father, but I'm going to leave you a helper, the Holy Spirit. And you know, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they're all three, and this confuses us. And if you're confused, maybe you can explain it to me a better way. I'm, I'm confused about it, but you know what? I don't have to figure it out. I just have to know that it works. Okay, we can define, I've heard it defined as water. I've heard it defined as water, liquid, and gas. I've heard it defined as me, myself. I'm, I'm Brock the husband. I'm Brock the dad. I'm Brock the pastor. I'm still Brock, but I've got three different roles. Well, that's the, I don't, however you want to explain it, I don't care. But as long as you understand that the Holy Spirit comes directly associated with God. While God is in heaven overseeing everything and looking over everything and then the, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding for us, the Holy Spirit is moving among us, keeping us all tied as one. The Holy Spirit is moving around us, keeping us all tied as one. I said the Holy Spirit is moving around us, keeping us all tied as one. What is the Holy Spirit doing? The Holy Spirit is keeping us all tied as one. It's keeping us all banded together. But it only bands us together of those that are willing to listen. We got the Holy Spirit. If you've accepted God's gift of salvation, you've got the Holy Spirit. Okay, it's there. I promise it's there. You've got the Holy Spirit. But what happens when you don't listen to it? I've got a boss at work. <laughs> I got a boss at work, and he's a good boss. He's good to me. He's he's nice. He's he he, he he's, he's a good boss. He bought my lunch the other day. He's a good boss. Okay? He, he is. He asked me to do something, though. And it probably would have worked because it's worked every other time. But this time I wanted to build it different. I want to do it different. What good did it do to have the Holy Spirit tell me what to do if I'm going to choose to build it my own way? So just because you're a Christian, just because you're saved, just because you have the Holy Spirit, you still got to listen to it. Galatians chapter 5, 22 says, For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. That's, that's the fruits of the Spirit. Which one are you? 
It's not which one you are, it's all of them we are. We don't get to pick and choose which one of them we're good at. Now, we're better at some of them than others. That long, that patience one, a preacher needs to work on that one. I, that patience one, that kindness is, I'm kind to those who like to be kind to me, but those ain't good. I don't know. Faithfulness. I've, I've got self-control, and I think i got love and joy. And, but you know what? If I, don't, if I lack patience, what good is that? Now, we all can't be master of them, but I'll tell you what, church, we better be trying. We better be trying. We better make sure that we've got the fruit of the Spirit. We better make sure because He's right there with us. We share a common origin in the Holy Spirit's work. The Spirit is the one who creates unity and empowers us to maintain it. The Spirit creates the unity that we as Christians believe, that we as Christians need. But it also helps us maintain it. Let's go back to that car engine for a second. What good does it if you don't change the oil? Oh yeah, you'll go 15, 20,000 miles. But if you're like me and my old cars, they like to use a little bit of oil. I had a rule of thumb with an old Toyota I had. Every, every tank of gas required a quart of oil. It just was what it was. I was. And again, proud to drive it. I didn't care. But if I'd forgot to put that quart of oil in it, I heard it coming down the road. And some, a couple of times I caught it just in time. So we've got to maintain. We've got to allow the Holy Spirit to pour a quart of oil, motor oil over us every once in a while to keep us lubricated. We've got to check the systems. We've got to have checks and balances. We got to have unity in the body, and that starts with the Holy Spirit. So, the biblical foundation of unity in the church is one body and one spirit. The next thing it talks about is one hope. We use the hope. To, we use the word hope today, trying to find something uncertain that we wish would happen. I hope it rains today. I hope my football team wins. I hope I got enough money in the bank to buy supper tonight. I hope I get home from work. I hope. Biblical hope, however, means that we look forward with the confidence to that which is good and beneficial. We've got a sign in our house that says, "Faith is taking the uh, faith is taking the eye beyond what the faith is taking the soul beyond what the eye can see." So the hope is going beyond what we can't see. We can see our struggles. We can see our our sports teams. We can see if it's going to rain or not rain today. But do we have the confidence in the things unseen? Do you put your hope in things of man? Where is your hope today? Where is your hope? Mine is in the Lord. Because I mess up enough. Okay, can I be honest? I mess up enough. I have to have my hope in the Lord. Okay, I have to have my hope in the Lord. If not, it is a jumbled up, squirrel chasing, preacher can't stay focused mess. Okay, my hope is in the Lord. Where's your hope? I often talk about people in my life, and I've got some good men and good women in my life, and some have passed on, and some are still there, and, and I'm getting new ones on a regular basis, and I like that. But every time, even my own daddy let me down one time or another. Okay? Everybody will let you down one time or another. The only one that won't let you down is our next phrase, and that is one Lord. How many times have I asked you to give me a story of when the Lord let you down? I've been asking for two and a half years and nobody's offered to bring forth a story because you know what? You ain't got a story. You don't have a story. 
of the Lord letting you down. But you do have a story. You do have a testimony and are you sharing it because there is one Lord. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, Salvation is found in no one else for there is no, one, there is no name under heaven for which mankind can be saved. There is no name under heaven which we can be saved except Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 the sweetest name I know. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus fills my every longing. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus keeps me singing as I go. Have y'all not learned by now, just because I can't sing don't mean I'm not going to sing. You know why? Because I get excited talking about Jesus. And I don't care how bad I sound, when I say the name of Jesus, when I sing a song to Jesus, guess what? It feels good coming out. It feels good coming out and it sounds good to me and it sounds good to him, so leave me alone. One of the biblical foundation of unity in the church is there is one body, one spirit, one hope, and one Lord. I said earlier, talked about confusion, talked about being confused. That's the Holy Spirit's job to eliminate confusion. So if you're confused, you probably didn't ask enough questions. If you don't understand, if you're confused, you probably didn't ask enough questions. And if you don't know, it's because you probably didn't pray enough. And if you don't know, it's probably because you didn't pray enough. If you're confused, you didn't ask enough questions. If you're confused, probably because you didn't ask enough questions. But if you're confused, I know it's because you hadn't prayed enough. God is not the author of confusion. The Holy Spirit is not the author of confusion because the Holy Spirit comes all within one. You've got to ask questions and you've got to seek God and you've got to pray. A lot of us doing a lot of time praying. A lot of us can pray the house down. But can you listen? Can you listen? Preacher, I spent 20 minutes praying to the Lord. Well, good. Did you spend 30 minutes listening? <laughs> well, I didn't have time for that. I had to go to work. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to know what he had to say back to me, preacher. Nobody says that, but we all say that in our actions. There is one body, one spirit, one hope, and one Lord. And because of that, there is one faith. Where is your faith this morning? Where's your faith this morning, church? Where's your faith? Where is your faith? Who are you trusting? Let me ask you this. What are you trusting? What are you trusting? I see our two newlyweds up here on the front row. Richard says, man, I'm trusting her. Yeah, it's new, Richard. Just hang on, buddy. It only gets better with time. All right? Yes. He better trust his wife, and you better be good to him, and you better be good to her, and now we're done. There you go. That's my marriage counseling for the day. Where's your faith? Where's your faith? Now I'm not saying we need to go out here in the middle of Deep Springs Road. And by the way, don't ever do this. The speed limit I think is 40, 35. It might as well be 70. It might as well not even have a speed limit at all. These folks believe they got to get from the interstate to the lake in point. It's two miles. They believe they got to get there in two seconds. And some of them can. Some of them just about made it a few times. So I don't encourage you just because your faith is strong to go stand out in the middle of Deep Springs Road and just stand there. Don't do that. I don't want my enemy to do that. I don't want you to do it. Hunter, don't you even go out there, Hunter. I need you. Don't want nobody to go out there because it ain't going to end well. It ain't going to end well. We can't be dumb with our faith. We can't be dumb with our faith. We can't take risks. We can't take chances. In fact, I think the Bible says something about don't tempt the Lord your God or something. Just stay off of Deep Springs Road unless you're coming to church or going to the lake or going home. But what is your faith? What is your faith? Some of us are walking around with blinders on. Some of us are afraid to take a chance because our faith is so weak. Now, I'm not talking about a faith going out here and standing in the middle of Deep Springs Road or going out and standing on the interstate. I ain't talking about those kind of chances. Where's your faith to serve your fellow man? Where's your faith to listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling us to do? Where's your faith? When the Holy Spirit tells us, 
and you don't do it, then you're in trouble. But when the Holy Spirit tells us to do it and we respond, what a mighty blessing it is. And what a, we get to see and we get to reveal how good God is. Where's your faith? Where's your faith? What's the next word? Somebody following along. What's the next word? Verse number five, third part. One baptism. Thank you. There is one baptism. We are, we are united with Him. The act of baptism into water pictures this as a reality. And this is the ordinance. This, the ordinance may be seen. It was good enough for Jesus to be baptized. It's good enough for me to be baptized. It was good enough for Paul and Silas. It's good enough for me. But why am I baptized? I'm not baptized because of Paul and Silas. I'm not baptized because of Jesus, okay? It's the act of baptism, I agree to that. But I wasn't baptized because of Paul and Silas. I wasn't baptized because of Jesus. I was baptized to symbolize to you and to the rest of the world and to myself and most importantly to my one true God that I wanted to be washed of all my sins in the past. And it was that baptism that reunites us as one. And the day I got bumps thinking about it. And as if the day this happens will be my last sermon preach from the pulpit. The day we enter those baptismal waters and I don't get those goose bumps and I don't get a knot in my stomach that I better do this right because, listen, I can lead you down the Romans road, but you accepting Jesus, that's between you and Him, okay? But when you come down to make a public faith of baptism, I don't want to mess that up. That involves me, okay? And I don't want to mess that up. And I don't want to, I don't want to drop you into the water. And I don't want to say the wrong thing. And I want to do it right. Because baptism is that important. Baptism is what binds us all together. Some of us got saved on a Sunday. Some of us got saved on a Tuesday. Some of us got saved on a Saturday. Some of us got saved on a Thursday. Some of us got saved at home. Some of us got saved in church. Some of us got saved in a, at a football f stadium. Some of us got saved in our car driving to and from work. Some of us got saved at Granny's house. There's all manner of ways and places for you to get saved. But there's only one place to be baptized, and that is in the water of Jesus Christ. And that water ain't holy. That water ain't special. The good thing about that water is it's good and warm. So go ahead and ask Jesus in your heart and we'll get baptized in that baptistry because it'll be good and warm. But you know what? It's not the water that saves you. It's the act that saves you. And it's the symbolism back to the church that saves you. One baptism which brings us all together. We are all one. Galatians chapter 3 verse 28 says, There is neither Greek nor Jew. Listen, Old Testament church, there's neither Greek nor Jew. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither slavery or free man. Huh? There's neither Greek nor Jew. There's neither bond nor free. Here's a good and for us all. There's neither male nor female. That's encouraging. Yes, it is, because you know why? Let me read that again. There's neither Greek nor Jew. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. You know why? Because we're all one in Christ Jesus. I said, Do you know why? For we are all one in Christ Jesus. You know why? Because we are all one in Christ Jesus. It's the baptism. It's the baptism of the one true God. It's the baptism of the Lord. It's the baptism of faith. It's the baptism of hope. It's the baptism of the Spirit that reunites us all as one. What's the last topic of the day? There is one. Some of y'all ain't paying attention. I'll tell you. There is one God. Be ready when you ask the question, preacher. There is one God. Verse number, verse number 6 of Ephesians chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse number 4 says... Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. How many gods are they? There's one. Now there's a lot of little G's running around. There's a lot of little G's that has checkerboard ties on. There's a lot of little G's in the form of money. There's a lot of little G's in the form of nice vehicles. There's a lot of little G's in the form of old vehicles. 
that look new and look nice. There's a lot of old, there's a lot of, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of gods, excuse me, in putting trust and faith in our family. There's a lot of little gods that, that things we need and trust and we got to have. But folks, when it comes down to it, there's only one God. And that one God loves you so much that He sent Jesus to pay the price for your sins. He sent Jesus here to live among us. He sent Jesus here to teach us how to live. He sent Jesus here to show us how to love each other. He sent Jesus here to pay the price for our sins. And He sent Jesus here to conquer death, hell, and the grave. Folks, there is one God. And that one God loves you. And that one God loves you. And that one God loves you. And because there is that one God that loves you, we are all united in that Holy Spirit. We are all unified in hope. We are all unified in the body. We are all unified in the faith. We are all unified in the baptism. You know why? Because there is one God and he's not, a, he's not a God of multiple faces, multiple personalities. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He don't change, we do. I said, God don't change, we do. Church, it's time for us to be a New Testament church. I've enjoyed going through the book of Acts and the book of Acts has been good. It was, we're not done with the book of Acts. we still got a lot of meat to go on to. We just ended Paul's second missionary journey and it was a good place to stop and I felt like the Lord released us so that's why we moved on to Ephesians and we're going to stay here in unity for a couple more weeks. The Lord's got some things planned up and that He's working with me on. By the way, my messages are for me as much as they are for you. I need a simple reminder of one body, one spirit, one Lord, one baptism, one faith, one hope, and one God. This morning's Sunday school lesson was kind of a review. Kind of a review stuff you already know. But I asked the Sunday school class, I said, how many of y'all can name the Ten Commandments? Can anybody standing here right now name me the Ten Commandments? Anybody want to take, take me up on it? Think about it. Can you state the Ten Commandments right? And I'm not saying the two. I'm saying all ten of them. Can you name the Ten Commandments? Can I be honest? Can I be honest? I don't think I could without really sitting down and penciling in and right. Off the top of my head, I'll tell you. Off the top of my head, I can't name the Ten Commandments. I'd figure it out in a few seconds, okay? But I couldn't without spatting it off. So we need to review you need to review. How many of y'all ride a bicycle? Kids? All right. Keep riding that bicycle because one day you'll be a fat 40-year-old and then you can't ride a bicycle then, okay? I promise. You don't want to get on a bicycle when you're a fat 40-year-old. You know why? Because I'm fat and 40, I mean I can't ride a bicycle. You know why I can't ride a bicycle? Because I drive a four-wheel machine now. I don't get on a bicycle anymore. Shoot. Why would I get on a bicycle? I'm not but actually benefit me to get on a bicycle. Squirrel. (laughs) One body. One body. One Lord. We all need to review. And I hope you reviewed today. But I hope you took it serious. And I hope and I pray and it needs to happen. You like my street sign this morning? I didn't make it. Unity Avenue, Deep Springs, Church, Christian Church. Will you get on Unity Avenue with me? Will you get on Unity Avenue with me? Unity Avenue will take us where we need to go. Interstate 40 will get you somewhere. Interstate 75 will get you somewhere. Deep Springs Road will get you to Douglas Lake. But Deep Spring Road, if you keep going on Deep Springs Road, you're going to literally be in Douglas Lake. There's a big old stop sign at the end of Deep Springs Road. Matter of fact, there's a stop sign at both ends of Deep Springs Road. I've searched and I've searched and I've tried to find and I've quit finding. There's no stop sign on Unity Avenue. There's no stop sign on Unity Avenue. 
How about it, church? You want to go down Unity Avenue with me? Don't say it unless you mean it. Don't say it unless you mean it. We need to be on Unity Avenue as a church. We need to be on Unity Avenue as individual Christians, first of all. We need to be one with God and we need to be listening to the Holy Spirit. And then when that happens, good things are going to continue. Good things are happening at Deep Springs. Okay, I'm not beating you up this morning. This is a review. But in order for good things to continue to happen at Deep Springs, we've got to make sure we're on Unity Avenue. Unity Avenue will take us exactly where we need to go. Unity Avenue. As we come to the close of another service, are you willing to travel down Unity Avenue? Are you willing to be one? Michael, Josh, we need another camera. Y'all just bless me. Four or five of y'all was nodding your head and shaking your eyes. The rest of you were listening. Thank you. That ain't part of my sermon. That's why I want a camera pointing back. Sometimes y'all need to see that y'all bless me. Let's go down Unity Avenue, Deep Springs, you want to? Let's get on Unity Avenue. Now, I got some head nods from some of you all. And it don't start next week. It don't start in January. Unity Avenue starts now. The Church of Deep Springs is headed down Unity Avenue. I got enough support this morning. I know that's where we're headed. Won't you come and go with us? The altar is open. The church is open. Is your heart open for what the Lord is telling to you? Let's stand as we sing. Number 488. Just as I am.
Maybe you didn't take a shower this morning. That's okay. Maybe you come a little dirty this morning. I'd rather go to Jesus dirty and I would not go to him cleaned up. You all right? As she continues to play, let us pray. The church is open for you. morning just as you are deep springs I don't we don't need I said I we don't need you to be all fancied up and spiffy when I talk to some of you all I'm guarded I know that I know that I because I don't view you as a church member I view you as something else I'm trying to work on that I'm trying to be normal with you like I am everybody else but we don't need you to put on a show we don't need you to be all fancified and spiffy if Fancified and spiffy's you, then you do fancified and spiffy. But if coming in dirty and unclean is you, then you come on in dirty and unclean. We got something for you, okay? We got something for you. Be in prayer for our newlyweds and be in prayer for those that are going to be married here in a couple of weeks. Most importantly, be in prayer for our church. That just like their marriages will be one of unity and love this church will be one of unity and love let's go down unity avenue you want to amen <laughs> 